Now, Germany and other EU countries rely heavily on imports of raw materials for use in key technologies such as batteries, robotics and renewable energies, often on one single country's supplier like China. And the sort of things that you could see just revolving around me were the kinds of elements that Europe has been getting from other countries, things like uh, cobalt, lithium, for example, graphite, titanium, and, and rare earths as well. China supplies actually 98% of the EU's rare earths, which are required in wind and solar energy equipment and battery production as well. Only 1% of the raw materials needed to make batteries come from the EU. So the pandemic and the war in Ukraine have made the blocks self insufficient, if you like, all too clear. Brussels now wants to use the Raw Materials Act, an initiative to reduce its reliance on just a few countries and make supply chains more resilient in the face of crises. That could be done by encouraging more mining and recycling of resources within the EU. Let's discuss this a little bit further and about how Europe got to this point by speaking to Lisandra Flack from Germany's IFO Institute for Economic Research. It's great to have you on DW Business. Just do explain to us how Europe has found itself so reliant on other countries and potentially countries with, you know, an, an, an unreliability to them on key raw materials. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in, in principle, overall, firms have offshored a great part of low value added steps of the production process, which is in principle a very good strategy if this is combined with a diversification of suppliers. Uh, but what we see is that for many intermediate goods and materials, the EU is reliant on few producers, uh, which implies a higher dependency as well. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this realization it seems to be becoming a, a, a a bit too late, isn't it? <laughs> well, um, I wouldn't say too late because in the next years we, we are going to see an increase in demand for several raw materials. So we have shown in our study uh, critical raw materials that uh, Germany and the EU need for the production of key technologies such as electric motors and wind turbines. And if the demand for these products increase, also the demand for raw materials increase. Uh, and uh, so there is uh, still a high need to act uh, yeah, in, this, uh, in this direction. So I think uh, uh, it's... Yeah, uh, the EU should now expand uh, trade relations with partners that are key producers and key exporters of, um, of ma intermediate goods and, and raw materials uh, to increase the resilience of supply chains in the future. But of course, one of the problems is that manufacturers and indeed consumers in Europe have got used to having to pay less or, get, or being needed, yeah, not, not having to pay so much money because of the, the cheaper raw materials that come from elsewhere. If they are mined in Europe, presumably they will be more expensive. So uh, is everyone going to be okay with that? <laughs> yeah, so what we observe already in the, in the data and surveys that we have uh, conducted, for instance, with firms, is that firms are really to change their sourcing strategy uh, of um, you know, sourcing of intermediate inputs, including raw materials, even if this is associated with higher production prices. Uh, and these, you know, as a way to increase the resilience of supply chains. So, for instance, we have asked firms about their future plans in terms of sourcing strategy, and in particular, firms that were severely hit by material shortages, these firms are planning uh, to increase the diversification of their supply chains and increase the stockpiling. Uh, but of course, this means then uh, higher costs and then also higher prices to final consumers. Yes, it is. There's always a knock-on effect for these things, isn't there? Lisandra Flack from the IFO yeah. Institute. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on TW thank Business. You. Thank you for the invitation.